Hello guys, welcome back to our series on Bluetooth Low Energy. So in today's video, we will be starting with coding how a BLE code is written in ESP32 using ESP IDF. We will understand about BlueDroid and NIMBLE Bluetooth stack for ESP IDF, how a BLE stack is initialized. For this, we will refer the GET server example uh, in ESP IDF. We will just have an overview of uh, advertising configuration in ESP IDF wherein we will see the structures defined by ESP IDF to configure a device in advertising mode. So let's ESP IDF host stack BlueDroid and NIMBLE or it is also pronounced as NIMBEL. So we have already seen Bluetooth protocol stack in our previous video. Hope you have seen those videos. If not, I will uh, share the link in description. So there I said that the host and controller stack or libraries are, are already provided by the vendor or by the microcontroller that you are using. So in, in case of ESP, they have provided two host libraries, BlueDroid and NIMBLE. Using these libraries, we will be building our Bluetooth application. And there is one controller library that is common for both BlueDroid and NIMBLE. So let's see where these libraries are actually located in the ESP IDF framework or components. So I am in my C drive. Here we'll go in Expressive, Frameworks, ESP IDF. I'm using version 5.3. Here components, BT. And you can see two folders. One is controller and the other is host. Inside host, there are two libraries provided by ESP IDF. One is BlueDroid. Inside BlueDroid, if we go in stack, you can see all the host layer stack here, which is GAP, GAT, L2 CAP. SMP. Similarly, if we go for NIMBLE, so at this location, you can see GAT, GAP, L2 CAP, SM. Okay, so this is the host library provided by ESP IDF. And here it is controller library, depending on the ESP controller that you use, we will be using ESP32 here. So now the second question is why two libraries are provided by ESP IDF? Let's see what is the difference between these two libraries. So the ESP IDF currently supports two host stack, the BlueDroid based stack, which is default supports classic Bluetooth as well as Bluetooth low energy. On the other hand, Apache NIMBLE based stack is Bluetooth low energy only. Let's see the difference. BlueDroid supports Bluetooth classic and BLE stack. So it is also called as dual mode. In NIMBLE, it supports only BLE stack. Heap and flash memory consumption is more here as uh, Bluetooth classic consumes more memory. If we use this BlueDroid in dual mode and heap and flash memory consumption is less as compared to BlueDroid because it is only Bluetooth low energy. Power consumption can be high if used in dual mode. If we use Bluetooth classic, the power consumption will be more and as NIMBLE only has BLE, so the power consumption here will be low. So in this series, we will be using BlueDroid and later we will be using NIMBLE. Let's see how Bluetooth stack is initialized in ESP IDF. For that, we will open Expressive ID. I hope you all have installed ESP IDF. It is pretty straightforward process. If you still want me to make a video on that, you can comment in this video. So if you don't have shortcut to open this ID, you can go to Expressive folder, tools, then Expressive ID. And you can open this.
we have already imported the get server example so to import go to file new expressive ide project you click on create a project using one of the templates select your target in our case it will be sp32 in bluetooth blue droid ble and you can find this ble get server here and you can click on finish as i have already imported it is not showing the finish option here so in get server go to main and open this get underscore demo dot c file here go to the bottom of the code where the main function is written so the bluetooth stack initialization starts with initializing the nvs so nvs is important because when bluetooth is initialized it also needs some flash memory to store its keys and all the second function is mem release here it releases the bss data and other section of the controller to heap so this is just written for the safer side also can be written to prevent memory leak so next the controller bluetooth controller configuration is done uh, using bt controller config structure so let us see what is inside this and a default configuration is assigned to this so it is recommended not to alter most of the configurations that are defined by esp idf like this controller task stack size if we go here it is defined in esp task stack size is assigned to it it is better if we don't alter this some configurations are from sdk config like this ble max connection so this can be updated from sdk config currently it is 3 you can increase or decrease or you can modify those configurations that are from sdk config we will see later how to do this next comes the bluetooth controller in it so these configurations are passed in this bluetooth controller in it function so as we have seen uh, the in esp idf there is a controller library so that will be initialized here after that esp bt controller enable this is also a controller function which enables the mode in which you want to configure this bluetooth so let's see how many modes are there bt mode ble it is complete ble mode bt mode classic bluetooth this is complete bluetooth classic mode and btdm this is dual mode means it will be having bluetooth low energy and bluetooth classic so depending on your requirement and use case you can configure this so now host initialization will start it will start with blue droid in it then blue droid will be enabled uh, let's skip this get register callback we will cover it when we start with get programming after that there is a esp bt gap register callback so this is the callback handler here and these are the events so whenever an, any gap event occurs a callback to this function will be called and depending on the event we can take the appropriate action and write the code for that let us see few so like this is advertising start complete event when an advertising function is called if it is successful or failure this event will give you the status of that here it is ad advertising stop complete so whenever a advertising stop function is called this event will give the status if it is success or failure now let's move down to the program again there are gap gets empty this we will cover in the upcoming videos so this is how a bluetooth stack 
a controller and the host is initialized in ESPIDF. So now let us see what are the advertising configurations done in ESPIDF. So there are two advertising configuration structure provided by the ESPIDF if you want to configure your device in advertising mode. The first one is advertising parameter configuration. So using this structure we can configure the advertising interval uh, that is the frequency at which uh, you want the advertising packet to be transmitted. Then advertising type is there own address type is there, peer address and peer address type, channel map at which channel you want to advertise and advertising filter policy. So this is kind of general configuration. The second structure is advertising data configuration structure. So what data you want to send inside the advertising packet, this structure will decide. So like you can see include name is there. So if you want to include the name of uh, your BLE device, the TX power of your BLE device, manufacturer data, service UIDs are there. So this is just an overview. In our upcoming videos, you will see in detail understanding of each structure member. Now let us go into the code and see the structures and how these are configured. So we are here in GAT server example. So this is BLE advertising data structure. This is how it is configured. And if we press control and click on this structure, so it is defined in ESP gap BLE API dot H, which is the host library. And this is BLE advertising parameter that is configured here. And it is also defined in same ESP gap BLE API dot H. So in our next video, we will deep dive into advertising parameter structure and understand what is advertising interval min and max, what are the different advertising type, address types. We will build this and sniff live data and check if the configurations are correct on the sniffer data. Comment below if you want me to make a video on specific topic. If you find this video helpful, do like and share this video and don't forget to subscribe our channel. Thank you.